Good afternoon, grade eight. Welcome to this revision lesson. We are doing revision of communication skills. I hope you are all ready for this lesson and I hope you have your drawing instruments and your paper on which to draw because we do want you to practice these drawings as we go. Drawing is a practical skill and it requires us to practice. Only practice makes perfect. Today, we'll do working drawings, single view flat to the dimensioning isometric and perspective drawing. I know some of you do not have the correct drawing instruments. If you don't, you are welcome to use the mathematical instruments, but these are the drawing instruments that are required for you to develop a good drawing. What you see in front of you here is your T-square. As you all can see, the T-square will be held in position by your drawing board. That gives you a good horizontal line, as I said yesterday. And you have your drawing board. Then the paper on which you're drawing must be held in position by clips. If you don't have clips, you're welcome to use masking tape. But it's important that the paper on which you're drawing must be held in position to make your drawing Perfect. Then you have your set squares. There's your 45 degree set square there. But in your drawing instruments, you have other set squares. These are not the only set squares that you have. It's important to have a sharp pencil, preferably a two edge pencil. And with these, you are good to go. Just to recap, yesterday we made a difference between oblique and isometric drawings. The difference is there in front of us here. What you see on your left is your typical oblique drawing. You use the 45 degree set square and your T square to make the base for this drawing, which is your horizontal line, which you will draw with your okay? With your 45 degree set square, you draw this diagonal line, which will be at an angle of 45 degrees. Then you develop from the so this vertical line going up will be at an angle of 90 degrees to this horizontal line. So if you look at this oblique drawing, you have one side facing you. 
That is another feature of oblique drawings. When your teacher is marking or any assessor is marking this drawing, they will assess whether the angle, the, the angle is really one of 45 degrees and whether this dimension is facing the reader of the drawing. So all the diagonal lines are at an angle of 45 degrees in, in, in relation to the vertical lines. If you can look at this staircase, it does have vertical lines. So you would have your construction lines uh, running with every step. You would have your vertical construction lines going up where you will be drawing the steps. So the dashed line is what you yesterday called what? What do you call this dashed line? You can remember? Grade eight class, are you with me? What do you call this broken line? What type of line is it? Hello, my children. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Lesedi. I've asked a question. The broken line, we call it what? It's not a construction line. Very good, Zamogufe. It's the hidden detail line. Very good. Hidden detail line. Yes, good. So, grade eight. You must know your line types. It's the very basic knowledge of drawing that you have to know because you'll be using these lines. The construction line is the faint line that you're playing for the drawing. All right, and I said when you draw these lines, the fingers, your fingers are further away from the lead tip, the writing tip of your pencil. You move your fingers away from that so that you draw a, a faint line, all right? So yesterday we talked about this broken line, the hidden detail line. We said normally, on these drawings, like the isometric drawing, we said we don't normally show the, the hidden detail line, but some textbooks do show the hidden detail line. But when we present our ideas in the technological process, we don't normally show the, the client the hidden detail line. It is for engineering purposes that we use this in detail line. Okay. The test will be on the 24th next week. Homolemo. We are writing a test on the 24th next week. All right. Okay. Now, let's come to the isometric drawing. All right. The common feature the basic feature of the isometric drawing is this horizontal line and the vertical line. Now the slanting line is at an angle of 30 degrees. So normally when you face an image that is in an isometric position, you see an edge, okay? You, you, you are faced with an edge. So this is the edge. This is the edge. It is the basic vertical line. Now these slanting lines are at an angle of 30 degrees. So that is the basic feature of isometric drawings. So we know that this staircase is, is, a, is projected in this drawing at an isometric angle. So we see, we just see it, even if it's a photo, you can see that this photo was taken at an isometric angle. This one is at an oblique angle, so they, we use a 30 degrees set square, all right? So this is basically the same staircase, but it is drawn 
in different um, methods. This one is the oblique method. How do we know that? Because we have a whole dimension facing us. This is drawn in an, an isometric. How do we know? Because we have this H, B facing us, right? So um, that's the difference between oblique and isometric drawings. Okay. Now we go to how to draw an isometric drawing with instruments. Okay. I will share with you the video. Okay, construction, hidden detail, outline, chain dash dot, and Lissedi, very good, Lissedi, you can remember the lines. Just that you don't have to memorize the lines, but you have to know them because it's, it's all practical, it's all application. You are going to use those lines in your assessments. Right, very good, my children. Now, um, I want us to, look, to, to go back to our video that you didn't finish yesterday. Just that, um, uh, we are going to start off where we are learning how to draw a hole in isometric drawing. All right, so I'm going to stop share this one and go to another screen. So I'm going to divide my page up into a measure.
Okay, what you have just seen is a skill of how to draw the isometric circle. Note that the isometric circle is not like the 2D one. A 2D one circle is just a matter of putting your pencil in your compass, then drawing the circle. But in isometric view, the circle is more like um, an oval shape and uh, it takes a lot of practicing to get it right. Please do practice it when you have time. Let me see. Okay, all right. I just want to see what you have to say to me. All right. I hope that you do practice the skill, especially the one of drawing a hole in isometric view. Okay, how did you find this? Tell me. How did you find this? How did you find this video? Isometric drawing and drawing the circle. Is it easy? Is it something that you wanna practice more? You're talking amongst, amongst yourself. I want you to talk to me. Okay, right. Now, um, then we move to perspective drawing. Right. This hallway is a good um, illustration of perspective drawing perspective drawing, you, 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 you see the images as if they are vanishing into a point further down there, all right? You even see it when you're traveling on a long stretch of the road, as if the road is ending at a certain dot somewhere ahead. So if you have to draw this, that's what we call perspective drawing. So we are going to do single point perspective um, that you learned in grade seven. This is an illustration of a railway track, right? You see that the track, the railway track, like, like I made the example of the road, it looks as if it's, it's, it's a vanishing to a certain dot there, right? 
I'm just going to take you through revision of this that you did in grade seven. Okay. You also did vanishing point. This is a pencil eraser drawn in single point perspective. So this is made realistic by using shading. So if you use your pencil using darker shades and lighter shades, you give this um, a, a, a realistic image. It looks real. So that's how we make our objects look real, especially in the design stage of the techno technological process or the design process. We want to show our client what product you are going to make. And we draw this product and we, we, we give it, we give it um, a real look by using texture, shading, and color so that the client will have an idea of the product that we want to make. Okay, this is just um, um, rendering, we call it rendering, using shading. But this one is single point perspective with color. Okay. I made an example of the road. This is the road. You see there's the sun down there. This road looks like it's disappearing into the sun. And these buildings, they are, re they are getting smaller and smaller in size. If you can look at this building here in front of us, it's big. But the next one is smaller. And even the trees are getting smaller and smaller. Okay. That's why we call the point at which the drawing ends. We call it the vanishing point. They seem to be vanishing. Okay. You want to chat to me? Vanishing point. Yes, yes, in Atlanta. It's vanishing point. So with color, you make this real. You know, this has more life now. It's better than a plain drawing without color, without any shading. You can also identify the shades here. You see you, there the is light on the side of the images. So we assume that there's more light here because we see the shading is lighter. Then the darker shading, it is consistent. It's giving us an idea that the shade is on this side. And the trees also cast a shade because a tree does have shade. So this is good drawing because the shade becomes darker under these trees and it's lighter elsewhere. So this is how shading and, and texturing can give um, an impression of your drawing. So when you practice these drawings, please ensure that you also practice shading and texturing. Okay, now we are going to do in grade eight, double point perspective, because in grade seven, we did single point perspective. Now, what you can see here is that we have more than one vanishing point, okay? For this image, we have one vanishing point this side and another vanishing point that side, all right? This is the skill that you are going to learn in grade eight. How do you construct a double point perspective drawing? Right, to make a vanishing point perspective drawing of a box, you can start by drawing a horizon line. This is what we call a horizon line. Let me show you a horizon line. It's right there on top. Right? So on this horizon line, in some drawings, as HL, the HL, you must know, is the horizon line. That is where you are going to plot your two vanishing points. You don't start by drawing a, 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 any, any a dimension of 
the, the image or, or of box. Because we are doing isometric drawing in vanishing point, in perspective drawing, we are going to construct, we start with the horizontal line, the ground plane in this case, we call it the ground plane. And then the vertical line at an angle of 90 degrees. And then how do you construct this? Who can tell me? We are going to place your T-square to hold on firmly the edge of your drawing board. Then you construct this. You see this line is faint. It's a construction line. So you're going to, to draw this vertical line, make it faint. Then you draw another. You, this is horizontal line. This, and then this is a vertical line. You can draw it right up. But then the length that you need, you darken that length as it's darkened here. Now on your horizon line, you have your two vanishing points. Now you are going to draw construction lines towards the vanishing point from both sides of the vertical line that you have darkened, right? do the same even on this side. That is the first step. <laughs> I hope you are with me. Okay. What did I say is this line? What did I say is this line? What do you call this line? Horizon line. Very good. Very good. Okay, Hakim, you're very good. Yes. Okay, right. Let's proceed. Then, um, you are going to start joining. You are joining um, construction lines from vanishing point one and vanishing point two. Then you join construction lines. There you have line A, line A there, line B there. Okay. Now, you know that on this, you are going to draw another vertical line. All right. If you want your line to be truly vertical, you must put your set square against the T square so that the alignment is correct. So if it's 90 degrees, it will be straight 90 degrees because your set square will be firmly attached on the T square. Now you see why I, I prefer T squares to rulers. Okay. Then there's the vertical line I was talking about. You do the same on the side too. You join construction lines from vanishing point one to those that are coming from vanishing point two. Then you draw a vertical line here and a vertical line here. How do you do that? You put your set square against the T square. It, it will give you a nice vertical line. You do the same on this side. And there are measurements. You don't just do it at random. Okay, here's the dimensioning. The side, it's um, 20 millimeters, 100 millimeters. This side, this one will be 60 millimeters. So as you are darkening your lines, you are also measuring. Okay, you are also measuring because uh, your assessor will be measuring also to see if you, you, you did stick to the dimensions. Then you will be, you see the top part of your box will come from this construction line. The edges will be coming from the construction lines. And we all know that this line here should be at this point, it should be a a hidden detail line because normally we don't see this part. When we look at 
this image, we'll be seeing the side view, top view, and the front view. So the, 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 the dimensions that you are seeing will be reflected by a, a hidden detail line. All right. Okay. And then uh, you proceed. You are now forming your complete box. All right. You are now forming your complete box because um, you are now um, marking the cutout. Okay. So this is how you construct a, a, a double point perspective. The next thing that you will be required to do is to darken these lines. You darken this, the lines that make up the box. You darken this vertical line, this horizontal line, and that one, and that one. You darken them like you darkened this vertical one, this basic vertical one. And you are going to darken all these lines so that your box will be complete. And when you have done that, um, I would say, depending on the assessor, you should leave your drawing like that. Don't erase, don't erase your, 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 your construction lines if the examiner said so. Okay, if the examiner said you may erase your construction lines, then you may erase them. If they didn't say so, because we are still learning at GET level, we leave the constructions like, construction lines like that. Okay, now in GET grade eight, we are supposed to draw the interior of a um, we must, we must be able to draw not these basic shapes only. We must be able to draw a lot of things in single point perspective. Okay? And then we must also be able to draw a lot of things in double point perspective. Maybe in your assessment, you might be required to draw not this box only, but you might be required to draw any other item in single point perspective and double point perspective. Because in grade seven, we learned how to draw single point perspective. And in grade eight, we learned how to draw double point perspective. So in your assessment, you might be given any simple object and you might be required to draw that in single point or double point perspective. So if I were, if I were you, I would practice both the perspective drawings. I would start with the single point perspective, try to draw a lot of things in single point perspective. Try drawing maybe the interior of your bedroom in a simple way, single point perspective. Then try to draw simple objects in single point perspective because drawing is a skill. It needs a lot of practice. Okay, thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and I hope that you will make it your business to practice to practice these um, practical skills. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Bye.